Hey, what's going on everyone? MXMA, and today we'll be covering some basic tips and tricks to increase your chances of survival in Deep Rock Galactic. So let's get her started. Our tips will be broken down into three main areas, starting out with some general tips, which are basic, the basics for every single situation. Then we have some tips for situations where you have full freedom of movement, so you're not holding down a single objective. Followed by tips when you have to stand your ground, and some closing tips, finally. So let's start out with the general tips. The main core of this entire tutorial rests on one basic thing, which is your OODA loop, spelled O-O-D-A. So what the OODA loop stands for is observe, so where are you right now and what's happening around you, followed by the orientate, what do you want to achieve and how do you want to achieve it, based on what you just saw, then decide, so make a decision on how you want to achieve your goal, and lastly by an act, do, make sure you execute your decision. This is not something you do once every mission, this is something that's a constant process. So once your first order loop is completed, you will start the entire process over again, keeping it rolling, keeping it rolling, keeping it rolling. So I'm going to show you a few like in-game tricks, so I'll consciously go through my order loop process with you. Hopefully this helps you out and get a bit of picture of what's going on. What's so coming in right here? So as you can see, it is really close to the wall and we're not going to be able to utilize the full area here. So this is the observation you make. We're going to be stuck against the wall, like not being able to use half of the area to play with. So we're just going to start mining out the area right now. So usually you have a drill to do this, but right now, because I'm an engineer, we're just going to be using our pickaxe here. While we're doing this, make sure we have our sentry set up over here as well to provide overwatch for us. So once again, to go through the process here, I observed that we need, uh, I observed that the fuel cells got uh, landed against the wall, which is going to mitigate like half its area uh, of the circle that we can stay in. So the orientation is to increase the area that we can stay in um, by doing, and, so then, and then the decision is to start mining out this area over here. And then once we make that decision, we're going to act on the decision by picking out this part of the wall here. But once again, basic new loop, there we go. Like at one point in time, it's gonna be become a subconscious thing you do, you just do it without thinking too much about it. Uh, but at the beginning, it's gonna take a lot of conscious time and effort for you to be able to just work this out. It's gonna take time for you to get accustomed to this entire idea of having to think about the, your environment you're in, what you can do to achieve, or what goal you want to achieve, how you can achieve it, etc, etc. So we should, we're almost done here with mining this out, and then once that's done, we, I will show you how much extra area we've created by just doing this. Like, it's taken a little more time here, but usually, even on like higher has missions, you do have some downtime in between, and you usually have a driller on your team which can just drill this out for you. So let's just say once it is mined out, it will be enough for now. Probably is we're gonna it's not gonna be the best min maxing we've ever done, but it's just for the example here. So let's keep this going. So there we go, we missed a tiny area here which we can quickly increase, but besides that we made a perfect round. So we increased half the surface area just by making this one decision and thinking about our surroundings for a little bit. So now that we covered the basics of the OODA loop and the entire process behind it, we'll be going on to the freedom of movement tips. What is important to notice when you are in an environment where you can move around wherever and whenever you want and you do not need to hold down an objective is that the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want to do. So using your OODA loop you can decide to position yourself differently, move around to a different position or you can shape the terrain in any way you want it to with the tools you've been given like your platform gun or your drills and maybe even being able to move around with your zipline. A good example of this, for instance, is creating walkways where you can move around from A to B or you can cover up holes like, which your teammates could like fall through. Down, I know, of course, it's like the typical shooting of ziplines getting you from A to B, which is used by the gunner. 
Oh now we've got the basics of freedom of movement out of the way, we'll go over to the stand your ground tip. So this is where we have to defend an objective, for instance, uplink to mission control. So once again, the OODA loop comes into play. It's, and the OODA loop is the basics of everything positioning wise and survival wise, in my opinion. So for instance, we start up with observe where are the black box fuels as a mission uplink located. And then we can orientate ourselves off of that. Like, hey, how can we shape this to make things work out in our favor? Once we orientate about that, we can make a conscious decision. Like, hey, we need to fill up these gaps or we need to drill out certain parts of the terrain so we can increase the area of the uplink radius. So once we make that decision, we can then go act on that decision and start executing it. And lastly, now that the freedom of movement tips and the stand your ground tips have been covered, we'll go over to the final closing tips here. So remember, even when you seem to do everything perfectly, the game sometimes deals you a shit sandwich. Sometimes you can dodge it and you can come out of it. Well, in other cases, you get no choice than to just eat that shit sandwich. Recently, I had a prime example during one of my missions together with a group of randoms where we got caught in a wave in a narrow cave. Like, generally speaking, that's not too bad. Uh, however, the problem was that we got hit by two oppressors and a bog detonator at the same time in a narrow space. Which resulted into us instantly being overwhelmed by those, two of my teammates going down and me try trying to scramble basically, trying to stay alive. Which in the end failed. Like So sometimes you get caught in a very, a very shitty position and you've got no way of getting out of there. So you have no other choice than to just eat the shit sandwich. And what's important to note when these type of scenarios happen, you try and analyze what could I have done better, but sometimes you have to come to the conclusion, we just got dealt this shit sandwich and we had to eat it. So don't be too hard on yourself when those type of situations happen. So that covers the basic tips that will hopefully improve your chance of survival on Hoxus. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for future content. If you have any questions or anything's unclear, make sure to leave a comment down below. I will try to get back to those ASAP. Or you can hit me up on my live stream, link in the description below. Lastly, have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.